Today's video is a subscriber request, and you guys might remember the band The Ataris because of their cover of the Don Henley song The Boys of Summer, or their gold disc So Long Astoria, or even their appearance on the soundtrack for NHL 2004. Or maybe you remember that video that was out on the internet about a decade ago of the group's frontman flipping out on their drummer mid-show. The band today has no original members except for frontman Chris Rowe, and Rowe has cheated death multiple times while one member of the classic lineup ended up in federal prison. On top of all that, Don Henley had some pretty horrible things to say about the Ataris. Today, let's talk about the history of the Ataris and whatever happened to the band. The Ataris' beginnings start in Anderson, Indiana. Original members included vocalist and guitarist Chris Rowe and guitarist Jason Thomason, who would meet in the summer of 1996 when Rowe walked into a pizza joint with a no FX shirt on. Thomason was at the restaurant and would remark to the South Bend Tribune, it's a pretty small town, and if someone is wearing a no FX shirt, I should know him, and I didn't. The pair would cross paths again at a music store, and they soon struck up a conversation and decided to start a band. They would form the band The Ataris, whose name was of course a throwback to the video game console The Atari, but it didn't seem like they ever ran into any legal issues from the game maker. Rowe would tell the Daily Oklahoman that the name was lost on some of the group's younger fans, admitting, I used to collect Atari games, but people don't realize what an Atari is. Some of our fans are kinda young. He would also reveal to Much Music that some of their fans couldn't even pronounce the group's name. By the way, his favorite Atari game was Pitfall. Rowe would soon quit high school at the age of 16, dropping out of Anderson High, and he soon focused solely on music. Surprisingly though, his parents were really supportive of his decision, provided that he worked day jobs to support himself. Rowe would spend his time off recording songs on his four-track recorder in his bedroom, and he would also have his father to thank for introducing him to a lot of his early musical influences, including Pink Floyd, David Bowie, The Who, The Stones, as well as The Beatles. And then he finally discovered Kiss and was soon enough imitating guitarist Ace Freely. Rowe's early lyrics would be based on his own personal life and his interactions with women. He would tell the same publication, I just like being in love. Other people like getting high or drinking. For me, I like being with my girlfriend. Both musicians would soon attend shows in Cincinnati, Indianapolis, and St. Louis. The Atari's first big break would come when they went to a show in nearby Indianapolis around 1996 or 1997 that would feature The Offspring and The Vandals. They gave their four-track demo to the person who was working at The Vandals merch booth and it soon found its way to bassist Joe Escalante. Escalante had just established a new label at the time called Kung Fu Records and was in the market for up and coming bands. So within three to four weeks, Roe got a letter from Escalante wanting to sign the Ataris. But Roe, funny enough, had forgotten about giving out the demo tape and he didn't actually want a label deal. He instead was hoping that someone from the Vandals camp would connect him with a drummer since his four track demo tape was done using a drum machine. While Escalante thought the Atari's music needed some serious finessing, he saw potential there, admitting to the LA Times, there was nothing special about his band at the time, but I was impressed with Chris's ability to write a great, catchy pop punk song. The Atari's soon signed with Kung Fu Records. At the suggestion of Escalante, he guided the two musicians to a drummer named Derek Plord, who was living in Santa Barbara. He would play on the Atari's first record along with bassist Marco DeSantis, and the album would be produced by the Vandals guitarist Warren Fitzgerald and would be titled Anywhere But Here and be put out in 1997. The title was actually a nod to their hometown of Anderson, Indiana, with a map of Indiana on the album cover. Rowe would tell an Indiana paper, I like Indiana, I just don't like Anderson, it's too small for my taste. Eventually, Rowe and Thomason would move out west to California, settling in Santa Barbara, but it wasn't easy. Rowe would tell Spin, I was homeless, busking for change, and my van got impounded. I was about to move back in with my parents. I borrowed $20 from a guy I knew and decided to give the band one more try. The first thing I did when I got my first royalty check was pay him back. But a chance meeting with bassist Mike Davenport led to Rowe living in his apartment, and the frontman was soon hired to fix students' living quarters at UC Santa Barbara. He would recall, LA would have been easier as a musician, but I'm a firm believer in fate. I was able to meet a few good friends in Santa Barbara. In LA, everyone is too self-involved. I would have ended up on Skid Row if I were in LA. The lineup that had recorded the Atari's first album soon fell apart, and a new lineup had to be assembled that featured Mike Davenport on bass, Chris Kidnap on drums, and they soon went through a couple different guitarists who would play on their next several releases. 
For their first major tour, the Ataris would play alongside the Vandals, Lagwagon, No Use for a Name, in addition to Blink-182, and they would play shows across North America, Europe, as well as Asia. Life on the Road would provide the inspiration for the group's second record, 1999's Blue Skies, Broken Hearts, Next 12 Exits, and 2001's End Is Forever. In fact, End Is Forever would be Roe's most personal album of his career up until this point, as he was going through a breakup with his longtime girlfriend. He would tell the LA Times that he was typically an upbeat guy, but would admit that the record was possibly a bit too melancholy and too much of a downer, with songs like Bad Case of Broken Heart, You Need a Hug, and Teenage Riot. Apart from being influenced by punk rockers, Roe also has some surprising influences including Frank Sinatra, Wilco, Hank Williams, and Tom Waits. In fact, the song Summer Wind Was Always Our Song would be inspired by how Roe met his second wife, Denise, at a bar. Summer Wind would be a staple of the bar jukebox where they met. The Ataris by this point in their career hadn't signed yet to a major label, admitting that they were a little apprehensive not wanting to go that route. Instead, they were modeling their career after Fugazi and Avail according to the LA Times. But the buzz around the band was building and it was pretty hard to ignore. They had also fulfilled their contractual obligations to Kung Fu Records. It was following the release of End Is Forever that the band had collectively sold somewhere between 100,000 to 300,000 copies of their records so far, depending on what you read. Either way, with numbers like that, it made them one of the most successful indie rock acts at the time. And of course, major record labels started courting the group. They would soon sign with Columbia Records, and Roe would tell the Asbury Park Press, We wanted to go somewhere that we knew that even if our record didn't do well, that we would have a career. They also chose Columbia because they claimed the label understood the tight bond that the band had formed with their fans, including operating their own website and reading and responding to every piece of fan mail they got. One fact you guys may not know about the band is they actually had a record store in Santa Barbara called Down on Haley, which they also had a rehearsal space in. The inspiration for the group's fourth and most commercially successful album, So Long Astoria, would be a book by Richard Hell called Go Now. Hell would play in the band Richard Hell and the Voidoids, and Roe would tell the Boca Raton News, there's this one chapter where he said that memories are better than life. I just had this whole theme that I wanted the record to portray that life is only as good as the memories we make. The title would also be a nod to one of Roe's favorite childhood movies, The Goonies, which was set in Astoria, Oregon. He would admit to the Boca Raton News that his songwriting was less about personal relationships and more about family and friends. The album's first single, In This Diary, would be released in February of 2003, one month before the album came out, and it would peak at number 11 on the mainstream rock tracks chart. But the song that really broke the band and got them on a lot of people's radars would be their cover of Don Henley's 1984 track, The Boys of Summer. Roe would tell the Miami Herald why the Ataris covered the song, pointing the finger at his grandmother who lived in Largo, Florida, admitting, Every summer my parents would fly to Largo. I was eight and the song was really huge on radio. I asked my grandmother to go out and buy that record. It always reminds me of summer. The song would take on a new meaning for Roe once his parents split up, adding that it helped him get through that difficult time. His grandmother, meanwhile, would pass away in 2002, and they would play the song as a tribute to her. A lot of people who heard the Atari's version didn't realize it was a cover. The song was originally written by Don Henley and Mike Campbell of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. The song was put on the Atari's fourth album more as an afterthought than anything else, as it was track number 10. The band's manager even tried to talk the Ataris into not including it, but they didn't think anyone would really take it seriously or take notice, and it would maybe appear on a film soundtrack. The Boys of Summer was never supposed to be released as a single, but it would be K-Rock in Los Angeles who started playing the song, and the band hadn't even played it live yet. The response was overwhelmingly positive, and Columbia would issue it as a single, despite the band wanting to go with the song My Reply instead. The song soon became inescapable in the summer and fall of 2003. Funny enough, the band's first live performance would take place at the K-Rock Weenie Roast. The cover would end up peaking at number 20 on the Hot 100 chart. The Atari's version of The Boys of Summer was also notable for changing the lyric Grateful Dead in the original version to Black Flag, since it was something a more punk audience could relate to. So what did Don Henley think of the band changing his lyrics? Well, he wasn't very happy about it, as he told the Montreal Gazette when asked about the change. No, not really, but I wasn't upset enough to do anything about it. I just went, okay, fine. And if you noticed, we haven't heard much from the Atari since then. He would add, I mean, they wrote some songs very poorly. They were not very good songwriters. 
and they put out an album and the only song that people would want to hear when they did a concert was Boys of Summer. But Mike Campbell was a little nicer towards the band telling the interviewer, it's not a song you expect a young band like that to do, but I kind of like their version of it. To support the record, the Ataris would be one of the headlining acts for the Vans Warp Tour, and the band would be frequently compared in the press to the likes of Jimmy Eat World, Green Day, New Found Glory, and The Used. The Ataris would tour for the next several years behind the album, but being on a major label also came with a lot more complications. The band, who prior to So Long Astoria had a very DIY kind of punk attitude, had to give up a lot of control over artwork, photography, and promotion. Couple this with the fact that the band's rhythm section was partying too much and the members were simply just getting sick of each other. Mike Davenport and Chris Knapp would end up leaving the band in the mid-2000s, with Davenport telling the YouTube channel Dave's Music Channel that he never left on bad terms with Roe, instead he started the band Versus the World, and his new band got a few years worth of touring offers that he opted to pursue instead of continuing on with the Ataris. He did, however, say there was some animosity between Knapp and Roe. Versus the World and the Ataris would actually tour together in 2012. In the years following the So Long Astoria tour, Roe got divorced and was now dealing with a lot of anxiety. Couple this with the fact that Columbia Records was undergoing some big corporate changes, and the band's days on a major label were numbered. A lot of the top brass at Columbia, in addition to their A&R man, who had long championed the band, left the label. The band was given the option of leaving the label and they did. The reason for leaving Columbia was that they weren't really sure if their follow-up record called Welcome the Night would even be released on Columbia. The Ataris did however entertain discussions with other labels after leaving Columbia including Warner Brothers and Interscope, but Roe wanted complete freedom and didn't want to answer to anyone and that was something that disappointed guitarist John Kalura. Kalura would join the band sometime in the early 2000s and he would be part of the So Long Astoria lineup. Following their departure from Columbia, Kalura and Roe would start writing new songs and it would result in a more experimental and atmospheric record dealing with mortality and loss that angered some of their older fans. Roe would tell MTV how the album would be inspired by a reoccurring dream that he'd been having since childhood, telling the network, at the start of it, it's the end of everything, the end of the world. The sun turns black and I'm in this little church in this small town and then I wake up. There have been different variations of it throughout my life, but the album has religious and spiritual undertones and addresses issues like hope, loss, questioning life, how we're so afraid of dying. After leaving Columbia, the band would sign with new label Sanctuary Records and they started their own label to distribute their fifth album. But within a few months of release, Sanctuary would go out of business and the album stiffed, selling about 10,000 copies in its first week. The band had previously announced that their upcoming tour wouldn't see them playing a lot of their older material, instead focusing on cuts off their new album. But Welcome the Night's poor performance shook the confidence of the group, who did a 180 and started playing older material. Kalura would tell the Washington Post in 2008, After so long Astoria, people had the wrong idea about what we were listening to and what influenced us. When that album was made, there was a lot of pressure on the band. The first major label debut in the whole nine. We wanted to keep things really simple and have straightforward rock songs. What we should have done after so long Astoria was continue on that path. People had grown into that sound with our band, so changing that resulted in people not really wanting to listen to the record. In 2008, Kalura left the band, leaving Roe as the only member of the So Long Astoria lineup. The band now had total freedom to do whatever they wanted, but that freedom also burnt Kalura out. He wanted to take some of the songs that him and Roe had written and send it to Brent Gerwitz who ran Epitaph Records and see if they could get on the label, but Roe didn't like the idea and instead went back to Indiana. Kalura would remark to Dave's music channel how himself and Chris had different philosophies about the business of running a band and he would make a remark about how Chris would jump over a dollar to earn a dime. Roe would continue to tour with his own version of the Ataris, with the band going through a revolving lineup of musicians. In the years since 2008, the Ataris have put out a couple EPs and an acoustic album, with their most recent release coming in 2016. The band was in the news once again in 2012, when a video surfaced of Roe attacking the band's drummer during a live show, which saw him throw his guitar and toss the drummer's kit. Is, but I'm gonna finish the set by myself. I'll play a few songs, whatever you want to hear, but I can't.
Dude, sorry, sorry. We all have bad shows, but I, that's embarrassing. I can't handle it. Roll would later release a statement saying the drummer had been playing pretty poorly due to him drinking before showtime. In 2013, the Ataris played a reunion tour with the So Long Astoria lineup. Then in 2023, the lineup reunited once again to play two shows in California. Kalura, for his part, would end up becoming a consultant to unsigned acts, and he owns a recording studio outside of New York City. Mike and Chris, meanwhile, have had their own businesses as well. Actually, bassist Mike Davenport would be in the news. In 2018, when it came out that he and his partner were charged with conspiracy to commit mail and wire fraud through their telemarketing company, the federal government claimed that they defrauded customers of $27 million as this telemarketing firm would offer consumers access to American Standards lists of houses that were either in pre-foreclosure or financial distress for a price of $199. It turned out that the homes either didn't exist or were misleading when people asked to get their money back, the company made it virtually impossible to issue refunds. Davenport would be sentenced to seven years in prison, but it looks like he's out now, as he appears to be giving interviews from his home as of 2021. Frontman Chris Rowe has cheated death several times in more recent years. He ended up contracting COVID, calling it the worst sickness he went through, and he ended up in the hospital for five weeks and still has a blurry spot in one of his eyes. He was also nearly killed when he contracted pneumonia a few years ago, and he somehow survived a brutal high-speed chase. He wasn't the one being chased by the cops, but rather the criminal who was fleeing the police slammed into Roe, and he was only saved from death by driving a big vehicle. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, if you have suggestions for future topics, use the link in the description box below. Take care.